Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. This is your host, the Barkeep, bringing you Podcast 35 here at the Tavern, presented by HeroTaku.com. Now, back by popular demand, or so it seems, uh, I have Raptor with me again. Uh, maybe I'm the only one demanding to come back, but... <laughs> Believe it or not, there are people that are asking for you a lot more often than they are me. But, really? Yeah. <laughs> But I got Raptor in today for a very interesting dis- discussion topic. Um, and basically, Raptor, here's what it is. There was an article posted last week on TheAdvocate.com about David Yost. All right. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know, uh, David Yost is homosexual. And unfortunately, his homosexuality led to him leaving Power Rangers. Uh, that's very simplistic as far as what happened. However, I will post the link here in the description, so I would suggest you guys go and read it. Uh, it's a very interesting read, mm-hmm. and the advocate I'm told is a pretty good website too. It is, it is. Yeah, but what I would like to go ahead and discuss is something David Yo says in the last part of that article, and I'm going to go ahead and read it here to you. Uh, I, this is the first time you're hearing. Is that correct, Raptor? Yes, yes. Okay. Basically, he goes. Uh, basically, the article says, and I quote here. But he hopes to see diversity in programming aimed at young people evolve to include LGBT characters in the near future. David Yo says, I would love to see a gay gay character introduced on a show like Power Rangers. There's a whole realm of possible stories that we've only begun to tap into, and gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, questioning, and intersex young people need to see themselves reflected in the world around them. So that, that's his quote at the end. And what that leads us into is what our discussion topic is going to be for today is gay characters and Power Rangers. <laughs> now, there is a number of things to go over about this. So let's try to take these one at a time. And, First of all, we already had one. Vita. <laughs> I thought Nancy from Lightspeed Rescue was gay or um, uh, Kelsey. Kelsey and Nancy were supposedly I don't know, <laughs> but but obviously there is no legitimate, yeah, um, no stated e- exactly, and all that. Now let, let's be on. Let's let's say let's make this statement first, real quick. I think right now that's not going to happen with the way children's television, quote children's television, is. Um, I don't think we're going to go ahead and see that. Although I would say it's not so much children's television. Mm-hmm. It's more a Saban thing. I would agree with that too, but I think it's it's both factors are going to tie well, into that. Look over tour. I know you don't watch Adventure Time, but mm-hmm. Adventure Time has had an all but ex, all but explicitly confirmed lesbian relationship between mm-hmm. the characters Princess Bubblegum mm-hmm. and the vampire Marceline. Now, and it's not just fan driven subtext it is but adventure time's a little bit edgier than your typical cartoon correct and yeah and cartoon network has always been a little more edgy yeah they've always been pushing that stuff but in terms of what is acceptable for children on saturday mornings was acceptable from saban who is really just trying who let's be honest i think the only reason saban bought power rangers back was to cash in on things like the 20th anniversary while save as much money as possible because I know they ain't paying for riders. <laughs> but but to the point, I don't foresee that happening here soon because I mean here's the thing: it's going to eventually happen on television. But when is it going to happen on Power Rangers? Because it, it's happened like the mainstream programs, like the quote adult programs and everything. And Glee is something for uh, teenagers, well, and they got gay characters, don't they? It's aimed at teenagers, but it's also popular among preteens and some elementary yeah. school kids. But but I think what what we need to get to to discuss about Power Rangers, I think in its current format, Power Rangers would not allow to have it, I think. And, and I find that very disturbing. Now, I personally don't know any homosexual guys. I know one gay couple who are really nice and all that. And I don't know much about the homosexual community as a whole. Now, Raptor, do you know any yeah, homosexuals? I, you, you, oh, God. Yeah, last weekend, I was at this Halloween party, mm-hmm. and this gay guy kept hitting on me all night. 
I mean, I wish he would have just taken the hint, but you know, yes, I know a lot of I know okay, a lot of okay, people, so lesbians, gays, trannies. Now, yeah, okay, so knowing a lot of people, they're in this community, and, and you obviously yeah. understand them better than me, just because you know more of them and all that. How do you? Th- I mean, do they say anything about they want to see more gay characters on television? They want, I mean, gay superheroes and stuff like that. Do you get a sense of that? Well, to be honest, I've never sat down and had a discussion with any of my gay friends mm-hmm. about, you know, do you feel that that you would like to have more representation mm-hmm. in television and whatnot? However, even just look towards Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Have, you, have you ever looked at Tumblr? Uh, once or twice. There are a lot of I think you can just guess that just by seeing all of the the slash art and the and maybe not so much slash art, but people who ship homosexual couples. I, I've seen that plenty on deviant art, I'll tell and you. I, that. And I realize yeah. that it's not just it's not just LGBT people who make these pairings because mm-hmm. they're perfectly straight women who make the same ships, but there is a demand for it. And again, harking back to Adventure Time, that ship has been incredibly popular. And, you know, to harking back to Glee, a lot of gay groups have praised the characters of Kurt and Blaine. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I, you know, I haven't had a discussion with, but yes, I, it's clear that there are many people who want more representation of the LGBT community in television. And heck, you know, I'm straight, but I like, I want to see more representation. And I think the biggest issue it's going to be is like, again, I think we're going to get there as a society where it's going to be common and television shows have that one gay person, not in the token sense, even though we got token black characters out there and stuff, I, but to where it's not going to be like, that's the, the crux of the series. Because there are so many sitcoms and television series that are based on the gay couple, the gay character and his way in the world and all that kind of stuff. But I think when we get to what David Yost wants to go ahead and do, it, it, do, it seems to me that not only does he want representation, but he wants to talk about these different stories uh, yes, about that. Yes. So I pose this question to you. What story... Can you tell in the context of Power Rangers about a homosexual, a transgendered, and intersex, or even questioning about that? Because I find it, I don't think that Power Rangers would be the right platform for those types of stories. Well, although I'd argue it could. Okay. Especially if it was another high school series. Okay. If it was a high school series, you could definitely hit on such issues. Well, I mean, without turning into Dawson's Creek Power Rangers, you know. You can still play... All right, so for example, just to go with an easy cliche. Okay. A story about bullying. Yeah. And you could have... You you could have this gay Power Ranger Mm -hmm. having to deal with bullies at school. Okay. So kind of like an extremely intolerant bulk and skull. Yeah, you know, bulk and skull without the, without the charm. Okay, so basically the the two characters from Dino Thunder. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, what were their names again? Devin and Cassidy. Yeah, but they weren't bullies. But yes, yeah, they, essentially them. Okay. And you know, I would argue, I would not. I know a lot of times, especially back in Mighty Morphin, mm-hmm. the monster of the episode would be connected to the plot somehow whatever the prop whatever the real world problem that the teens were having but yeah more so probably in the second season than in the first but yeah i understand i would make an argument for you know say we're having an episode dealing with bullying the monster doesn't even necessarily need to be connected to it and just have the fact that there is this monster right around say it's an especially powerful monster mm-hmm. rangers are having trouble defeating it so mm-hmm. the rangers are having trouble defeating this monster right about, and at the same time, this character is dealing with intolerant bullying. So double the stress on the character. I can see that, although the only thing I would worry about is that if we have, let's say, hypothetically speaking, 
we have a Power Ranger series based on Kiyu Ryuji, just so we get a visual in our head. Okay? okay, and let's say the Red Ranger is the homosexual character and all that. When you do stories with him, you know you can't make every story being about his gay struggles. Oh, I, think. I, I completely. But agree. I but I wonder, could you just do the series saying I'm gay and that's it? Because, okay, look at all the Rangers have had relationships. And I look at, okay, let's go back to Mighty Morphin. Let's look at Tommy and Kiryu. They had a relationship. It was accepted. And we went on with it. So could we just introduce the Red Ranger with a boyfriend I and not would... have to make a commentary about it? Just do it. Okay, so I would be okay with the idea of not having to make a commentary. Because mm -hmm. you know that, in its own way, is progressive. Yeah. Because it's saying... You can have a normal, well-adjusted person mm -hmm. who happens to love the same sex. Yeah, because and I'm going to make a quick point right here. It's like the the black red rangers. The thing is, the series never makes the point that they're black. They're just the red rangers. And I know ethnicity and homosexuality are two separate things, but people make such a big deal about it outside the show, like. Everywhere you look, TJ, first Black Red Ranger, and Jack, the first Black Red Ranger in the Disney era, and stuff and like that. But you don't have to draw attention to it, because TJ's the Red Ranger. That's it. And none of his episodes dealt with him being black. That was the thing. It was just him being the Red Ranger. So I wonder, in the context of homosexuality, do you even need to bring it up? He just, I mean, to where, is he the gay Red Ranger, or is he the Red Ranger that just happens to be gay? You, you know what I'm saying? I understand that. I would I would prefer to see some kind of acknowledgement of it. Mm -hmm. And even if, you know, let's say, yeah, we're not going to deal with a bullying episode. Mm -hmm. But I think there needs to be some acknowledgement because otherwise I think it would be a bit of a disservice to have him say, oh, hey, guys, I'm gay, and then never bring it up again. And, and I guess in the context of where we are getting as a society, it has to be discussed at some point, because I guess we're not going to be at that point. Because again, when TJ became the Red Ranger in 97, we were at the point where we didn't have to make a big deal. But that, that, the thing you was know. about Power Rangers was Power Rangers had acceptable racial diversity from the very beginning. Exactly. It was also mandated racial diversity, but nevertheless. <laughs> it was? Well, I mean... You look at Power Rangers, every season had an African-American character. Oh, okay, had, I, thought, you know, I thought you were... Made, I thought you were well, I mean, in casting, you. that's been the general except they have to have one of each until they got to New Zealand, and they just didn't care most of the time. Well, then you get the indeterminate ethnicity, ethnicity of the Mystic Force team. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, but and, and again, just to clarify everyone, again, I'm not trying to connect race to homosexuality, but it's a, it's a question of pointing it out and whether it should be pointed out or not. And I guess where we are, again, is it, it has to be mentioned as an introduction. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, if if Turbo was made in the 60s and all that, you would probably do some episodes with uh, TJ being black, black culture, and acceptance yeah. because of the time it was made. Now, since Turbo was made in the 90s, you didn't have to go ahead and do that because it wasn't any kind of deal that you, oh, my God, a black Red Ranger, you know, yeah. we have to say something about it. But I think, you know, if we... if Right now, they did Power Rangers series with a gay Red Ranger. They would have to make mention of it. Yeah, it would probably probably have some kind of after school special episode. Yeah, well, I mean, but that being said, yeah, yeah. I would like to, you know, I, I I agree with your idea of not making a huge deal about it, but I want acknowledgement of it, even if it's as simple as the boy, say the Red Ranger has a boyfriend, mm -hmm. make that boyfriend a recurring character. Yeah, I mean, because you see so many love interests and all that. And, and you know, they never come back or they're one shot off, you know. But, you know, if Connor, say, from Dial Thunder, you know, dated a guy from website, you never see him again. You would really question that as opposed to the multiple girls you see him with throughout the series. Yeah, just have, you know, have a recurring character as a boyfriend. There you go. You're acknowledging it and you're not, and you're not, you're not sweeping it under the rug either. Now, here's another question I just thought of when we were talking about this. Because I've been saying gay Red Ranger. Do you think that there could be any type of misinterpretation if he was a different Ranger? And here's my point. Let's assume that they have another series where it's a male Yellow Ranger. Okay? Okay. 
And say they decide they're going to make the gay ranger the male yellow ranger. Do you think something like that would have a negative connotation? Or even the fact that it's something other than the Red Ranger, the leader that's in power? Because, you know, when you, when you cast the Red Ranger, you always got to make him usually the competent leader, except for the rookie in red stuff that they've been doing for a lot of seasons and all that. Make mm -hmm. him the character worthy. I almost wonder if they do introduce a gay character, if they would make him another color or the Red Ranger. Because if they make him the Red Ranger, that's almost affirming that he is... A, that he's capable and he, he's capable and intelligent but if they make him another color a, a backup or even again a male yellow ranger does that send any type of negative sin signal i don't think it does okay you know look at each season you have you have kids whose favorite is the blue ranger mm -hmm. people whose favorite is the green ranger or the black ranger so I think as long as the character is written as a strong, competent character mm -hmm. and he's not portrayed as being weak because of his sexuality, mm -hmm. then I think it's fine. Now here's an interesting thought, and I told you about this earlier, but so in Die Ranger, we find out in an episode that, uh, well, we know that the Die Rangers are descendants of many generations of Die Rangers. Mm -hmm. Well, somebody on Ranger Wiki had posted a photo of the original Die Rangers in spirit form from one of the earlier episodes. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much, it's very clear that all five of them are male. Meaning that one of the ancient Die Rangers was a pink female ranger. You mean a pink male ranger? Oh, pink male, yes. I'm sorry, I'm getting all mixed up here. But yeah, pink male <laughs> ranger. Okay. That being said, could it be done with a gay character to make them pink ranger? And if it is, is that a bad thing to do? Uh, I think that would be a bit controversial. I think that mm -hmm. would be right up there with making the black... Ranger, ranger black. and African American. Yeah, and making the Yellow Ranger Asian. Yes. Because at that point, you are drawing attention to the stereotype of gay men as mm -hmm. being overly effeminate. I see. And I realize that's a bit of a double standard because no one would bat an eye if you did say a... Let's say we have a lesbian character mm -hmm. and she's a Blue Ranger. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone would bat an eye at that. But if you yeah. made but if you made a male character a pink ranger, I think you would get some accusations of stereotyping. And you know, here's another thought that I had. And I like this whole idea with the color thing because colors do represent things. Mm -hmm. And the way the roles are in Power Rangers, they represent a number of things too. Now, you remember seeing pictures of Audrey Dubois before, when she was the original Yellow Ranger before mm -hmm. Thuie Trang. Yes. The thing I would have to say about her character is she was very boyish in the way she dressed, the way she acted, yeah. and even her hair. And I wonder if that was a conscious decision at the time because they were using a male counterpart from Zoo Ranger. Yeah. I so, okay. here's, my, here's my train of thought. I don't mean to go ahead and catch up. Here's my train of thought. They haven't really done a gender switch in Power Rangers in quite some time, mainly since Disney bought it, because they it's been obviously male in the recent yeah, series, Magi yeah. Ranger, Hurricane Ranger, and so forth, and, and all the that. Footage as the we get better quality footage, it's a little easier to notice. Exactly. I mean, pretty much what they've been doing now is they pretty much been saying keep the genders the same. Mm -hmm. But we've been talking about gay male characters. Let's talk about gay female characters, lesbian characters. Okay. Because do you think that if they took a female character and did a gender swap and did like a male Yellow Ranger, would would that have any negative connotation to it? Because like imagine, let's say Trini's character was Audrey Dubois, okay, who okay. again looks boyish in the way they designed her and all that. And what if it turned out she was a lesbian and the Yellow Ranger and it's male in the Japanese Sentai? Does that say anything, you think? I don't think it necessarily does. Because despite the fact that yellow rangers have, female yellows have typically been more tomboyish. Mm -hmm. Taylor and, and all yes. that. And, yeah. I don't think that would say a lot. I think, in, I think it, would, it would more depend on how she was characterized outside of the suit or what she was saying in suit. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, 
I may be reading too much into this, but I just get that feeling that as soon as we get introduced a gay character, somebody on the conservative side is going to point out something about what color they are, uh, what role on the team well, they it, play, it and things may like not that. Not necessarily be someone on a from a conservative stance. It could be someone, I mean, you could get a complaint from a gay rights group about a certain color being, making the character seem stereotypical. Yeah. And, you know, let's look at Kyori Uchi here. Mm -hmm. What if they <coughs> made, what if they made the first Kyori Violet a male and say he was gay? Mm -hmm. You may get some issues because, like, oh, purple, you made him a stereotypical color. Yeah, because purple, pink, I mean, it's all kind of the same there. Yeah, I understand. But at the same time, I don't... And you may even get such accusations if you, if there was a future male yellow who was yeah. homosexual. But I don't think you'd get any complaints if he was the Black Ranger, the Red Ranger, the Blue Ranger, a Green Ranger. Mm -hmm. Or even Sixth Ranger or something like that. Yeah. It just seems to me that people are going to find a problem with it one way or another. Uh, um, because, you know, I don't care, really. If they're gay, they're straight, lesbian, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. I just want good stories, and I want fun Power Rangers. That's all I want. So it doesn't matter to me. But I know there are so many people out there that it's going to really bother okay, one way so or another. I'm going to disagree with you here. Okay. You've heard have you you've heard the story of when oh please correct me on her name. Okay. The, the actress who played Uhura on Star Trek. Oh yeah, uh, Michelle Nichols. Yes. Michelle Nichols. She you heard the story of when she was considering of considering quitting the show. And right? she met Dr. King and he talked her into staying on the show to be, you know, for um black rights, basically. Yes. Because And yeah. then Whoopi Goldberg when she was younger, watched Star Trek mm -hmm. and saw Lieutenant, Lieutenant Uhura as a black character who is mm -hmm. something other than a maid. Yeah. And Whoopi has gone on record saying that's when she knew that she could do whatever she wanted. And that's what inspired yeah. her to get into acting. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying right here. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just, I'm just saying, let me clarify myself here, because I understand how you just took that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me what you do with your characters as long as they're interesting. Right. That's what, I'm, what I care about. Now, I understand exactly what you're saying about how it could be an inspiration for the community, can help with uh, relations and stuff like that. And that I totally agree upon. But if you introduce me a team of all five Power Rangers who are gay and lesbian, I don't care if they mm -hmm. are. It doesn't bother me. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, it, do okay. it doesn't bother me if that's what the case is. Mm -hmm. But I 100% agree with you on that because I don't know, but like Glee, and that's the only thing I can think of because that's like the, the thing... Oh, I, I guarantee you there'll be somebody 20 years from now that was inspired by the characters on Glee and all that, you know? And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I think that's great and all that. And there are a lot of people who who credit Neil Patrick Harris as an inspiration because he is very open about his sexuality. Neil Patrick Harris is gay? Yes. That I did not know. Mm -hmm. Been with his boyfriend for nearly 10 years. Really? Uh, well, I just learned something new there. I mean, I love George Takei still. When I found out he was gay, I was like, okay, so what? You know what I mean? Oh <laughs> but I, I love I George love his. I love it when he <laughs> mixes his sexuality with his humor. Instead of saying gay, just say Takei. <laughs> have, have you seen the video he made in response to the NBA player? Who was making homophobic statements? Uh, no, I did not see that. Oh, it's so funny. He said... He, he, he says, you know, you've made some terrible, hurtful statements, mm -hmm. but we don't, we don't hate you. In fact, we like you a lot. <laughs> and he just goes on to talk about, you know, just talk about all these things he finds attractive about the guy. And then he ends it with, one day, when you least expect it, I will have sex with you. <laughs> George Takei is one of the most wonderful human beings on this planet, I think. And I think he's been a major inspiration because the man is 
very outspoken about his beliefs. Mm -hmm. And I think that he, you know, I haven't read any testimonials, but I'm sure that there's some people, some LGBT people who have felt inspired by him. I mean, oh, I, I'm, I'm I feel sure. inspired by him. Yeah, I mean, it's George Decay. I mean, what else do you need to say? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, I want to go ahead and end this by, let's tie it back to David Yost, because we seem to be going all around the spectrum here. And since none of us are homosexual, it's really hard for us to talk about community that we don't really understand. You understand them better than I do, obviously. But... Let's bring this to David Yost, and I, I want to ask these questions, basically. Because it seems obvious that the reason he left Zio was because of all the heckling and all that. Mm -hmm. Which I'd like to think none of his cast members, or like Jason Frank or anybody like that, was having any issues. Although it seems like David Yost and Jason Frank didn't get along from some footage I've seen. But we know the people behind the scenes. Well, we know that, you know, Aisha's actress in particular, she... Have you heard of the No Hate Project? I've heard of it, yeah, and I've seen a lot of the the characters on there and stuff. So again, I, I hope it. I hope the reason he didn't leave was because of one of the the actors or anything. From what I, I've I know read, it's it the was crew. It was the crew, cast. and that's what the Advocate article says as well, and all that. Uh, but the the point I'm getting is he left because of that, and of course he is not coming back for the leg Legendary War. Uh, or the Mega War is what they're calling it, because he the, a lot of those people are still kind of around, and he's just afraid to go back a little uh, bit. Well, I'm not sure about that. I have a feeling that... Well, I read somewhere that was kind of like his thing, is like he didn't want to be around a Saban production. Yeah, again. he said on his hashtag, done with abusive relationships. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not going to be back. But but let's say, for, for the sake of argument here, that David Yost eventually comes back to Pioneers, whether it's owned by Saban, Disney again, or somebody we don't know. Okay? Mm -hmm. And let's say they do a season like they bring him back like Tommy and Dino Thunder and all that. As mentor. Okay. Exactly. Do you think it would be wise to have him play a gay character since he's gay himself? And the reason I ask this <clears throat> is we know it's Billy. He's the he's the iconic Blue Ranger, the intelligent one. Okay, and he was one of the few Rangers that evolved over the time that he was there in those four seasons. So I wonder if bringing him back in a mentor role or even a power or leader of Power Rangers role, basically, and having him gay will help help with gay relations because you have such an iconic character. Well, first of all, I I disagree on the idea that mm -hmm. just because an actor is gay, that his characters have to be gay. Yeah, and I'm not saying that they for, have to. For, I'm for just, example, George yeah. Takei has denied that Sulu was a homosexual. Yeah, because Sulu's married and has Demora as a daughter. Yeah, so he, you know, he said, just because I'm gay doesn't make Sulu gay. Oh, absolutely. And, and I'm not trying to say also, that, you know. Also, I would argue it would be, I think it would be better to have a ranger, a protagonist, mm -hmm. be, be a homosexual or... So but not necessarily the mentor. Yes. Okay. I see where you're going with that. And I'm not trying to say he has to be gay and all that. I'm just wondering if, again, using his icon... I mean, look at George Takei. Let's take back to him, okay? Everybody knows who he is. He's Sulu. He was an icon of the 60s. Uh, you know, he's a big star now, and everybody loves him and all that. Now, you can't make Sulu gay because you can't retcon something like that. Yes. Okay? But, you know... If Sulu was intended to be gay, or they did reveal in the series that he was gay and all that, would it make his character strong, you think? you think more people would like Sulu because of that? And that's why I'm wondering with Billy, because again, I'm not saying you have to make him gay. I'm just wondering what? how much that would okay, help. So, what I would say is, it, you know, to have Billy come back, would the significance of that would be lost on a lot of the younger audience. I see what you're saying, yeah. You know, people who were nothing more than a twinkle in their father's eye when he was the red, when he when was the he blue, was the blue ranger, ranger. Yeah, I don't know why I was about to say red. What where did that come from? But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and so I think it would be more impactful to have one of the rangers, the the group of characters that the kids will identify with the most, mm -hmm. the one that's going to have toys made of them. I see what you're saying. And I, I, okay, because I would always say I would always love to see a ranger come back and lead another team. No, I, I and like stuff that like idea that too. But, but I, I don't think 
I, I think Billy came back, he would have to be kind of in a mentor role and all that. And again, the only thing I thought is just like his iconic status, if that would help things. You know, here is one of the greatest rangers of all time. Let's be honest, I have original five or original six. They are, you know, gods in, among us, basically. Yes, yes. So, you know, to find out that one of these walking legends here is gay, that almost kind of like... Well, that's okay. He he amounted the great things, and he was a great Power Ranger and all that, you know. And like I said, I think the significance would mostly be for the longtime fans. Absolutely. And, and, you know, even if you get, like, young adults and all that, because, you know, there are, I think, people in their 60s and 70s still struggling with sexual identity. It, you, it doesn't matter what and age you, know, you are. And, you that's another can of worms, the fact that there are not that many elderly LGBT people depicted in media. Except for that Patrick Stewart uh, portrayal, which was funny, but I don't think it was accurate. What was that in, anyway? I don't know what movie it is. I just always see the clips. I'm just like, oh, Patrick, you're so awesome. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I see, because uh, there was that Star Trek video I showed you. Yes, yes. Splicing clips of that in with TNG. If anybody knows the name of that movie where Patrick Stewart is dating, like, a young homosexual man and he dresses in pink and all that, please let us know what the title is, because I I have no idea what that movie is. But, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, there are, here's the thing. The, the truth is there are a number of issues you're going to have to overcome, and you really have to cross your T's and dot your I's, I think, when you do this, mm-hmm. eventually. Um, I mean, even if they do it within the next five years, that's still going to be rather difficult on a lot of levels. If, you know, if we can progress as a culture within five years, and that's not a big deal, and, you know, they don't have to tread lightly, because that's what I'm worried about, is that they would have to tread lightly if they do this. Because, heck, parent groups get pissed off about everything nowadays. They got mm-hmm. pissed off Power Rangers was too violent, and then Lord Zed was too evil, and once again, let me quote Ankara, he's a lord of evil, so I don't know what you were expecting. Exactly. He's an antagonist. But yeah, to tie this back to the original subject... Yeah. Well, yeah. I, <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. For yeah, me. we seem to do that a lot, but I love how we're just going over so many different ideas and yeah. topics. I would say that sometimes you need to step up and make that controversial move. Mm-hmm. You know, depictions of gay teenagers in high school on primetime American television was essentially unheard of before Glee. Mm-hmm. You had a few in there, but they weren't major characters. There, yeah. was, there was a guy on Dawson's Creek who was gay, but there wasn't a lot made of his sexuality. And then one of my favorite shows, Boston Public, at least the first three seasons, they had gay characters, but they didn't really do anything with them, or at least nothing that left a lasting then, impact in my mind. And then Glee came along and put their gay character front and center. Mm-hmm. They did not mince anything with Kirk. And that was bold. It attracted a lot of controversy. And yet it attracted a lot of praise in return. And, and I think that, that speaks to the fact that th- they're, they're here, they're queer, we're used to it. Exactly. And, and we're, we're, getting, we're getting there. And it's going to eventually trickle down to children's television shows where it's just going to be one of those things. Just like how... White guy and black girl dating was socially taboo to where two guys will be dating and it's not going to be socially taboo in programming anymore. And, you know, sometimes you just have to look at the haters and say, fucking deal with it. Exactly. And that's, you know, you know, again, I said Power Rangers is probably not the best form and all that. But when you think about superheroes and all that, I, I just would love to see a Power Ranger on top of a building just yell out, Deal with it. <laughs> uh, that that would be, or at least having like a Zord behind him to help emphasize the point. Yeah, <laughs> and and there's one last point I want to make. Children's television, especially more so than other forms of media, children's television, children's movies, children's books, whatever. They teach more. They teach lessons. They help us grow into. Who we, the adults we will become. And that's ultimately what Power Rangers needs to be doing. And Power Rangers yeah. taught a lot of good lessons growing up. Yeah, but they need to get back to that. And this would be a prime opportunity to make uh, a social statement as opposed yeah, to eat to, your vegetables. Yeah, you know, to kids who are 
know, who may be questioning their sexuality, who may be watching this show. Mm -hmm. And to see a gay character who is a strong character, who is not ashamed of who they are, can tell them that they are okay. And I absolutely agree with that point. And that's the point we're going to close on because I couldn't say it any better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we hope you guys enjoyed here. And, you know, if we've offended anybody unintentionally, we want to both apologize for that right now. This is territory that neither of us are well uh, able to speak with. Well, I mean, you write on the newspaper, so that's probably a little bit... Uh, well, and, you know, several of my best friends are gay. Oh, well, absolutely. But, yeah. but I'm saying it's like none of us are mean to offend. If we've said something to offend you guys, we definitely apologize. Again, all our point was we wanted to talk about David Yost uh, and talk about gay characters and Power Rangers, basically. Yeah. But, you know, if you guys like that, let us know. Definitely leave your comments. I'd like to see what my fan base really thinks about this. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we're definitely open to hearing what you think on this. Absolutely. And uh, as always, please be constructive. Uh, that's helpful for everybody. Um, but, Raptor, anything you want to say just in parting? Mm-hmm. Like I said, I I want to see a character, a gay character on Power Rangers, not just for token representation, but just to tell kids it's all right. Absolutely. Well, again, that's another good point to leave on. So, Raptor, I want to thank you for joining me here again. I want to thank you guys for listening. Have a good night, and the tavern is now closed. <laughs>